From Alpha City, the home of the superhero, comes the only news program that gives you all the super news all the time. Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Alpha City News Senior European Correspondent Dan Zabak has filed a report from the Ruritanian capital of Strelsau. Zabak's report details what seems to be the last confrontation between polymath genius adventurer Nicholas Borbaki and the so-called Archduke of Evil, Sinister Rex Dexter. Borbaki has sometimes been called the imaginary mathematician due to a period of his life when he was forced to renounce his very existence and allow the claim to be put forth by his associates that they had, as a group, invented Borbaki, using the name to create the supposed fiction that one individual was responsible for the wide-ranging scientific achievements of the group. This, of course, was required to allow the actual Borbaki to safely work alongside Major James Keller, pilot of the Z-1 Missile Man suit, in order to prevent the evil organization known as Cobalt from taking control of the People's Republic of Ruritania, the predecessor to what is now the Free State of Ruritan. Borbaki and Sinister Rex Dexter have a storied history of conflict. Dexter is believed to be a bastard child of Rupert Hentzow, the deceased Supreme General and President for Life of Ruritania during its time behind the Iron Curtain. This is often cited as the cause of Dexter's repeated actions to destabilize the Free State, beginning with the attempted assassination of the Free State's first democratically elected leader, Osra Rassendil. Borbaki himself took the bullet intended for Madame President Rassendil, now Mrs. Rassendil Borbaki, and he succeeded in capturing Dexter for the first time in the villain's already storied career. In the intervening years, Borbaki and Dexter have fought one another all over the world and occasionally beyond it, as Borbaki and his associates have disrupted Dexter's slavery, drug, and gun-running businesses wherever they could be found. Dan Zabak, ACN's man in Ruritania, witnessed what might prove to be the final chapter of this story, though. Ruritania, and its capital, Strelsau in particular, have been racked with strife over the past ten days, as Dexter and a small band of mercenaries have struck again and again at the country's people and infrastructure, in an attempt to spark an uprising against newly sworn-in President Hans von Tarlenheim. Dexter struck at the inauguration of the new president, and seems to have assumed that the general populace would rise immediately against the nascent von Tarlenheim government. The wounding of their new president only incensed the Ruritanian people, though, and Dexter found every hand turned against him as he attempted to gain a foothold in the country. Fully half of Dexter's hundred-man force was captured or killed during their initial attack, and while Burbaki and his team accounted for a good number of them, the crowd of citizens in attendance were responsible for even more, and President von Tarlenheim, though wounded, actually managed to capture two of the men who attacked him himself. Dexter found himself between a rock and a hard place, not even able to free the country as Osra Rassendil Burbaki, now Ruritania's representative to the Euro Alliance, quickly prevailed upon Alliance leadership to secure Ruritanian borders and airspace, using forces volunteered by a number of countries, all of whom have been victims of Dexter's nefarious actions in the past. Ten days into his attempted coup, Dexter found himself alone, his force decimated, hounded at every step by his implacable enemy Nicholas Borbaki, and heavily wounded. The denouement came atop the lovely Flavia Falls outside the city of Zenda. Dexter was attempting to reach a secret hideout cut into the stone behind the giant carping of his father Rupert Hentzow's face, known as Rupert's Folly, when the Burbaki group finally ran him to ground. 
The delirious Dexter, dragging a satchel full of explosives with him, threatened to set them off if anyone should come near him, seeming to believe that if he could just enter his late father's hideout, he would be beyond reach. Rupert Hensow, famous for his paranoia, reached out from beyond the grave, though, and proved to be the end of Dexter, as booby traps set in the entrance caused Dexter's satchel to ignite. The resulting blast didn't simply destroy Dexter, but caused all of Rupert's folly to crack and fall, vanishing forever into the mists beneath Flavia Falls. In the two days since, the local peoples have been joined by peoples from surrounding countries to work together and repair the damage done by Dexter and his men. And, in a seeming rebuke to both Sinister Rex Dexter and Rupert Hentzow, the destruction of Rupert's folly exposed the hidden readout Dexter has been seeking. Inside, President von Tarlenheim's men found a vast collection of gold, art, and cultural artifacts stolen by Hentzow during his time in power. It seems poetic, to this broadcaster at least, that the actions of two evil men resulted only in their own destruction, while causing unity and wealth to be given to those they sought to harm. Zabak's full report of the events will be appearing in tomorrow's edition of the Alpha Citizen. This has been Alpha City News, written and produced by Carter Lee. I do apologize for this being such a short cast, but I'm on vacation, and my writing schedule is all kinds of messed up. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can drop me an email at alphacitynews at gmail.com, and you can sponsor the show by going to patreon.com and searching for Alpha City News. There are some cool things there that the first patrons will get, so check it out. Again, that's patreon.com under Alpha City News. I would also hugely appreciate it if you could leave reviews at iTunes or leave a comment at rhymeswithgeek.com. Rhymeswithgeek.com is also a great place to get the latest news, reviews, and podcasts about all things comic-related. Check them out. They're pretty cool. So until next time, Alpha Citizens, have a great week.